Next up on the main stage, Stanford head coach Jared Haas and student athletes Dejan Davis and Josh Sharma. Have at it. Scrum style up front, fire away. six or seven guys that have seven foot wingspans and uh, just kind of how that kind of plays into your philosophy recruiting wise and kind of the team you're trying to build. In yeah, at this point we do have a, a team that's that's long and uh, fairly athletic. It's been a priority in the in the recruiting uh, the last couple of years is to recruit skilled guys that have length. And we do have long wingspans and, uh, and fairly athletic guys and I think um, our philosophy of how we're going to play really fits fits in with that as well. So um, defensively, we're trying to be as uh, disruptive as we can, you know, without just going crazy and, and you know giving up uh, giving up layups and that kind of thing. But we're trying to be disruptive and and play fast. Last year, especially when we got into the conference season, we were playing a um, up tempo and getting out in primary and secondary breaks. And I think with our length and athleticism and skill, uh, that's a priority again this year. How many guys is it exactly that have that, that wingspan? And I need to, I need, to, I think it's either six or seven guys that oh, okay. have seven, seven foot wingspans or greater. Okay. So. And, and how much of a nod is that to kind of the way the, the game has kind of progressed, like with respect to the NBA? Yeah, I think the game in general is, you know, long and lean, athletic, but there's also been proven time and time again there's a lot of different ways to to play and be successful. Uh, this fits in for how I want to play and uh, kind of the vision for the program. How do you process, you know, the loss of someone as good and as important as Reed? I mean, what was that whole experience like? Yeah, with Reed, um, obviously he's uh, he's moved on, and the, it's not something that uh, it took a lot of processing once he made that decision. Uh, the team, especially, but uh, well, everybody uh, moved on quickly, and we uh, have developed a game plan and talked to the guys about their individual roles and and, and what we need to do to, to move forward. But uh, obviously, uh, he and Mike Dorian, we had a lot of pieces last year that were experienced, that were uh, in general very big, strong, physical guys, and uh, you know we're going to have to evolve as a team, evolve as a program. Um, but it's something that we we did so very quickly. Health, I mean, obviously that's something that's been really hurting your program. How much different is this, you know, going into a year, you know, relatively healthy? Yeah, and it's always the uh, having guys that are healthy and um, getting the guys on the floor is, is goal number one, yeah. certainly. And um, from our strength coach to how we develop practices to, to how we're developing the whole big picture here uh, is, is important. And one of the goals is that we can develop some depth uh, that you can hopefully absorb foul trouble, absorb injuries, absorb any uh, you know kind of hiccups as, as we move move forward, um, but trying to keep the guys healthy is, is certainly a priority. And um, as we get into the season, especially into the games, uh, teams that are healthy are certainly going to have a, a big advantage. Jared, uh, six of the twelve schools in the league have been implicated in some form or fashion in the federal investigation. Does that concern you about whether you're playing on a level playing field in the conference? Yeah, in terms of the investigation and the trial right now, I think. Uh, it's always a goal, and to be honest with you, with all the times we're out on the road and talking to coaches, that um, there seems to be a priority. I know from my own standpoint that, yeah, you do want a, um, an even playing field, and that's uh, certainly the end goal when they talk about the, um, you know, the Rice Commission and, and all the steps uh, that are put in place right now. I think it's with the intent uh, that we, we always have an even playing field, and, uh, um, and how it all plays out will, you know, will be interesting. Um, uh, I do think moving forward um, with everyone with that in mind uh, is important. Have you been paying attention kind of what's been coming out of there? Or? Certainly, I think within you know college athletics, it's uh, you're always trying to be well versed in that kind of thing. And um, right now, it's just a, a wait and see approach. You know, as, as things uh, as things unfold. But I am optimistic, and uh, I'm an optimistic person. I'm. I do believe that uh, at the end of this, that's going to be a, a a really strong product. College basketball is going to end up in a good spot, and it doesn't mean anything's perfect. Just like in any business or industry, it's it's not perfect. But I do think uh, um, with the right uh, you know, people in place, um, the right uh, goals in mind, uh, we're going to get to a place that's going to be really, really positive. So you liked what came out of the Rice Commission? 
You know, with the Rice Commission, I think it's – I like the fact that we're trying. Yeah. And I, I, I'll hold judgment in terms of every date or every camp or every AAU tournament and how it, how it plays out because the one thing I, I will say is I don't have all the answers. But I do like the fact that we're trying to be assertive and aggressive to, to make it the best situation we can. How are you? I'm really good. <laughs> I just got here, so I don't know if, uh, the questions that were asked before. But last year, few injuries, KZ not available, so the, the start of the year was slow. Now, if everybody's healthy, how do you get your guys to understand the importance of every single game, no matter if you're playing you know, out of the country, out of state, wherever? How, how do you get them to understand that just because it's not about we're not in conference play, that every game matters, it will be judged at the end of the year. Well, I think one of the um, characteristics of our team is we're very, very young, <laughs> and hopefully it's not a defining characteristic as we move on through the season. But with a young team, I think one positive is I think they, when I look in their eyes, I think they believe in me, they believe in the staff, and so when we deliver messages, uh, right now I think it's it's resonating with them. But we do need to make sure they understand that it's not an AU weekend with eight games and, and you know games just kind of you go on to the next one. It's uh, understanding that not only every game but every practice, every possession uh, impacts the program and having a sense of urgency and an, an understanding of how um, how important every situation is into building the, the final product. And so that's a message that's trying to be delivered every day and uh, how much is sinking in, well, time will tell. So with Reed gone, there's a, there's a big void there as far as production and you have some people there but are you playing with the lineups in practice every day? And which lineups do you really like? And you look at it and you're like, man, this is this is pretty cool. This could be different. This could be tough to, to defend. Yeah, right now we have a group of individuals that I think are very, very versatile. And then collectively, that even adds to even more versatility. I mean, we can get out there and have a team that is very, very small and athletic and quick, you know, kind of one through five, all five positions that are out there. And we can have lineups that are extremely long. Um, you know, and lean, and uh, it's the versatility piece has been fun, and we are tinkering with uh, you know lineups and, and what works best together. Um, and as we're doing this too, each individual is is trying to showcase what they can do uh, and how how they can provide to the program. And so, I'm not going in with a set idea of this this lineup, or we have to have a traditional two man or three man or four man or five man. It's more what are our best components, what are our best um, best ways we can put this all together and that'll be the final product. So I think we do have some ability to be flexible as a staff uh, and the players need just or need to understand right now that their production and their ability to, to do the things we ask are will be important for their playing time and more importantly to our team success. You go from a senior dominated team to a sophomore kind of dominated team, you're going to have to count it. I know it's your, kind of your first recruiting class is that sophomore class now. You're going to have to rely on them a lot more this year. Yeah, of the 13 scholarships, 10 are underclassmen. And uh, it is a, a young group, and uh, not only the sophomores, but the freshmen. And the freshmen are going to be relied on a fair amount this year. So the growth process is, look, that's going to be what dictates our season. I think we do have some talent. I think we're, we have lots of reasons to be optimistic. But how quickly can we grow up and, uh, and learn the lessons? I think last year we saw that to a certain extent, that you did have some older guys and some veterans. Um, and with the young guys, and how that all meshed together, and it took a little bit longer. And we certainly did have some other issues and you know injuries and guys that weren't available in the in the non-conference. But our ability to grow uh, throughout the year will really impact our team and really def define who we're going to be. Coach, one last uh, wingspan inquiry. I'm just curious, who has the longest wingspan on the team? And do you know what that is? Like, I will get back to you on that. I think I think we have a couple guys uh, uh, that are seven. Two, um, I do think. I mean, Josh, Keenan, uh, KZ. Uh, trying to think. I think we have. I think seven two is the max, though. Okay. Cool. So, yep. Coach, you talked about wanting to focus on the defense a lot in the first couple weeks of these practice sessions. If you had to give a grade, how do you feel it's going? Uh, defensively, I think we are uh, certainly spending a lot of time. I think the grade right now would be a B. Um, you know, it's probably an A in terms of throwing a lot of information out them out there and, and um, trying to learn quickly. Um, 
the execution is probably about a C in terms of being able to get it done right. Um, and then as long as we have the intent as an A, uh, you know, I'm pretty confident we're going to get to where we have to get to. Do you feel like you're on schedule? Yeah, it's hard to uh, give a defined schedule for this for these guys. Um, in terms of the X and O's, I do think we're on schedule. Uh, and actually, in terms of the growth and development, um, kind of the collectively as a team and having a young team grow up, uh, I think we're on schedule. But that's a that's a vague, vague question with a, with a more vague answer right there. <laughs> Speaking of on schedule, we're gonna go one more question, and we're almost back on schedule. So you've been working with different combinations of guys in practice so far. Who has stood out to you thus far in those different combinations? Yeah, with uh, a variety of guys have had had good you know off seasons and then going in for our first uh, you know ten practices right now. But you know the freshman Cormac Ryan's been been really good and um, uh, Bryce Wills has been fantastic. I think he's had a great you know ten days uh, coming in right here and uh, for a freshman is physically a young freshman even he's very physically. Uh, gifted and strong defensively. Um, the old guys, obviously, <laughs> we're sitting here saying the old guys are sophomores, and uh, that that is interesting, you know. But we pretty much know uh, what to expect from them. Their attitudes have been great. Part of it too is understanding their roles, you know. And obviously, guys like um, Dejan and KZ, you know, Josh Sharma have been around. We want them to take more leadership roles. Uh, but as we as we talk about that as well, it's not going to be their show. It's not going to be, hey, we're going to build a team around you guys. It's going to be their job to incorporate uh, what they do within the team concept.